Hello everyone, welcome to Force Galaxy. Hope you are doing good. So today in this video we will be discussing the question why asynchronous apex is required. Okay, so this question is usually asked in the interviews and what we used to say that to avoid the governor limits whenever we want to process more number of record okay the answer is correct we usually we require this asynchronous effect basically when we want to uh, avoid the governor limit exceed error and want to process more number of records so we'll discuss some of the uh, more points also so we can easily tell to the interviews why we basically require this asynchronous effect uh, apex and usually we use these points in our day-to-day -day client work also so let me summarize all the points here so our very first point come is yes to avoid the governor limits okay as we know in the synchronous apex whatever the limits we are having they get doubled in the asynchronous apex like to make the dmls in uh, uh, one transaction or to retrieve the number of records or to make the SOQL and SOSL so they all will be increased in the asynchronous effect so whenever there is a requirement or we are getting an error because of the governor limits so in such cases we can easily move to the asynchronous effects and handle this governor limit exceed error or whenever we require more governor limits to be performed in a single transaction then we are going to move to this asynchronous apex okay next comes is whenever we want to make callouts from the from triggers okay So this is also a very important point we all know that directly callouts cannot be made from the triggers because triggers runs in a synchronous way and to make the callouts it will going it will going to throw us an exception because the callout whenever we will going to make a hit to the external services so it might take some time to get the result and our trigger will going to run in a synchronous manner so he cannot wait and he will going to execute but if he is not getting any result at the same time then it will going to throw us an error so to avoid this error so what we do if whenever the requirement come to make the callouts from the trigger we separate the callout in a separate thread okay that is making it asynchronously so whenever we want to make callout from the trigger we use the future methods to make the callouts that is we are using the asynchronous apex so next point comes here is the to avoid mixed DML errors, okay. So you all are aware about the mixed DML errors. So whenever uh, we are performing DMLs on the setup and non setup objects in the same transaction, then we will going to get this mixed DML error, okay. Because Salesforce not allow us to make the uh, DMLs on both setup and non setup in the same transaction. So to avoid this error, what we do uh, in the in a uh, same transaction, we make DML on one of the object, and to make the DML on another object, we separate the thread and make DML here. Okay, using this asynchronous method. So either you can use here future method or batch apex, whatever thing you want to use as per your requirement you can use so this is how we will going to avoid mixed dml error using the asynchronous apex okay so next point here comes is whenever we want to process the requirement or whenever we want to execute our logic in the separate threads then in such cases also we require asynchronous apex okay to process things in separate threads okay so in the synchronous way we know that the things will going to execute in a continuous manner but whenever their requirement comes when we want to separate when we want to execute logic in the separate separate thread so in such cases we require this asynchronous apex 
so our next point is to to whenever we want to process the things in separate threads we will going to make use of this asynchronous apex okay so these are the few main points which we usually used in our projects and in our tasks but unable to recall all the points at the time of interviews okay what we used to do we usually used to say like to avoid the governor limits or to uh, uh, increase the governor limits we use this asynchronous apex so one point uh, another point is also there so you might have heard about the error cpu limit exceed okay so why we used to get this cpu limit exceed so whenever you used to write a logic okay and it is taking more time than the expected time okay so there is a time limit when to process the complete logic okay if this logic is taking more than that particular time so it will going to give us the cpu limit exceed error okay so for so to avoid this error first thing we will going to see in the same logic either we can able to manage the number of loops or the dmls sql whatever made if they are not manageable then we are will going to move our logic to the asynchronous apex that, that is using of batch apex and all and then we'll avoid this cpu limit exceed errors okay so all these are the points because of which we require this asynchronous apex okay so to avoid governor limits or whenever we required more number of, more number of limits in our logic okay whenever to make the call outs from the trigger avoid the mixed dml error to process things in the separate threads whenever the requirement comes you require to process them in the separate threads we require this asynchronous apex to avoid the cpu limit exceed error also we require this asynchronous apex hope this video is useful and if you have any queries or questions to let me know in the comment section thank you